Hi everybody, Dr. Alice here. In this short video, we're going to review all the components of blood as well as what they do in the body. Hopefully this will be a good way for you to refresh everything that, or most things that we talked about here in chapter 17. Remember that when we look at blood, blood is composed both of plasma, which is the fluid, and the formed elements, which are the types of blood. Inside plasma, what we mostly have is water. And remember that water is really good at absorbing heat and it helps to balance your body temperature. But another big component of plasma are the proteins that we find in plasma. We didn't talk a lot about albumins, but we did talk about things called globulins, also known as antibodies. So globulins make up a good portion of those proteins in your blood Remember that antibodies or globulin proteins are involved in immune reactions. The one other kind of protein that we did discuss was fibrinogen. Remember that fibrinogen gets chopped up or processed into fibrin, which is the protein that's really important in the process of blood clotting. Now, in addition to using this fibrin protein for blood clotting, we also use platelets in the process of blood clotting. So remember that platelets circulate around in the bloodstream they're my primary cell involved in the process of blood clotting. When we talk about platelets, remember that they're not technically full cells. They develop when we split up those big cells called megakaryocytes into lots of little pieces. So platelets, my smallest of the formed elements, the things that when I spin around uh, a, a vial, they're gonna be down in the bottom half of things. We also talked about how we have a lot of erythrocytes. This is the primary kind of cell that we see uh, inside blood. When we talk about erythrocytes, their major function is oxygen transport. Oxygen transport occurs using the hemoglobin protein. That hemoglobin protein can also transport carbon dioxide, which is the gas that we create when we're done breaking down our food. So transportation of gases is a job of the erythrocytes. Platelets do blood clotting, which is, is their function. But what we recently talked about were the leukocytes, those white blood cells. Remember that white blood cells are either granulocytes or agranulocytes. So my three types of granulocytes, things with spots, are neutrophils, they're the most abundant, eosinophils that stain bright red, and basophils that stain dark blue. The agranulocytes are the lymphocytes, which are highly specialized, as well as the monocytes that turn into macrophages. When we talk about neutrophils, remember that the big thing that neutrophils do is they fight off bacterial infections. They're also the first one on the scene, so they start the process of inflammation although what's much better at causing inflammation are my, my very few basophils that I have in the blood. Basophils spit out that thing called histamine. Histamine is what causes allergic reactions and causes inflammation. Basophils, that second kind of granulocyte, their granules stain dark purple or blue. The one other kind of granulocyte that we talked about are the eosinophils. Aosinophils stain bright red and their primary function, what they're most elevated in, is when you have a parasitic infection. These three types of cells, the granulites, granulocyte cells, these develop from a myeloid precursor as well as these monocyte cells. These ones don't have granules, they don't have spots, but they still come from a myeloid stem cell. Monocytes primary function is phagocytosis. Phagocytosis means I'm eating things. Monocytes, when they're activated, turn into a macrophage, a big eater. Their job is to eat things and then take the surface proteins from that bacteria or that virus and show them to lymphocytes. Remember that lymphocytes come in two varieties T cells and B cells. We talked about how each of those kinds of cells have different functions. Remember that there are three kinds of T cells and there's our B cells that turn into plasma cells 
or into memory cells. As you're studying all the components of blood, thing number one that we want to know, do we have more plasma or more formed elements? Well, we have more plasma. Number two, what's plasma made out of? Mostly water and some of those proteins. We want to know what are the functions of the proteins that we discussed. And then we get down to our formed elements. When we talk about the formed elements, the first thing we want to know, myeloid or lymphoid precursor cell. Where do they come from? Then we want to know what their functions are. So the function of erythrocyte, carrying oxygen or blood clotting for our platelets and all of these different functions for those leukocytes. And one last note about our leukocytes, we want to know in particular, do they come from a myeloid or a lymphoid precursor? And what kind of colony stimulating factors, CSFs, do I use to develop them? I would recommend as you're studying this, consider making yourself uh, a web or what's sometimes called a concept map. Put blood in the middle and then divide it up into plasma and into formed elements and make yourself branches off of each to help you mentally group together what does what. If you study those things and know those them in that order, you should be in good shape as you're working on your chapter 17 quizzes.